All right, today is uh, Friday, I'm due for an update. So back home, they asked me to uh, do some overview of the actual product, uh, highlight some details, kind of give you an overview of uh, what you're gonna get when you get this bike. So here it is, this is the Hyper Scorpion, actual production unit. This is uh, exactly what you're gonna get. The only thing I've done here is added the tall seat option. I'm uh, 6'3", and I need a little bit more room for the pedaling. Otherwise, this is 100% stock. Uh, the original concept was to be a retro style uh, moped that you see in the 70s and just make it electric. And I think we definitely uh, hit that target. And one of the issues with step through frame bikes is they can kind of look a little bit goofy. So we wanted to make them look actually kind of cool, but still retain the step through. This way, anybody can ride this bike and it'll look really cool. But aside from that, we want the performance to be very, very high. This bike, we wanted to do something very special, really put the performance out there, let people have something very, very special. So the first thing visually you're gonna see is the big headlight, especially at night is gonna be the, the big headlight. It has a halo ring. These four elements give you about 2000 lumens. So it's really, really bright at night. In this mode, you have the daytime running lights on. This one turns on the bright lights. If you wanna turn the daytime running light off, uh, turn it off from here. There's also a standard license plate holder. It's also illuminated from the electronic system. As far as the lighting, the next thing you're gonna notice is the turn signals. Electric bikes are getting faster and they're also uh, being used on the road. Although they may not be necessary from a legal standpoint, you wanna be able to communicate with the cars what your intentions are. And the signal lights are, are just something that once you use them, it's like, wow, electric bikes really just need uh, signal lights, especially if you're doing a lot of commuting. With the uh, turn signals, you also have a, a rear brake light. So we also sell an individual horn. Uh, that's an accessory that works with basically any bike. It has its own power supply. For this bike, we wanted to integrate that onto the bike directly. Uh, nice thing about the horn is it's crazy loud. Same horn that's on a motorcycle and people hear you coming. Well, this bike also comes with rear view mirrors, which is very important. Also, when you have the rear view mirrors, you actually feel more legit uh, as far as being a vehicle on the road. Sometimes people, when they see you just on a bike, they maybe think you're not moving very fast. But when they see the mirrors and they see the light and the, everything all together, it brings a different kind of presence, which gives a little bit more respect when you're on the road. On the topic of safety, we can talk about the hydraulic disc brakes. We're kind of just done with mechanical brakes, moving all the hydraulic disc brakes. For bikes this fast and carrying this much payload, uh, you definitely need the stopping power from the hydraulic disc brakes. Not only do you have more power in braking, but you can better modulate the pressure of the braking, which is very important depending on the conditions of the road. Another thing we did was custom tires. Uh, one issue with electric bikes is you really go real far out and you really want to have that security of having puncture resistance. So we went ahead and did a five millimeter puncture protection on these uh, street tires, 20 inch by four and a quarter. Another overview item is the dual suspension system. That's just something that you just really, really have to try. It makes a world of a difference. It's <laughs> super, super smooth. It keeps you in your saddle. Another thing is you can run higher tire pressure so you get a little bit more performance out of your bike, but also you still get compliance uh, when the road gets bumpy. The rear suspension is adjusted from here and the front suspension is adjusted with this knob. You can also lock out the front suspension as well. So it's not necessarily something you would think about when you're looking for an electric bike, but after you use them for a while, you know you need a very big gear ratio so you can pedal comfortably as the bike starts picking up speed. Nice thing about this bike is you have an eight-speed transmission. That's a cassette. Also, your smallest cog is 11T and your front chain ring is 56. That's right, 56. The other thing you have is a USB port. You can charge your phone or other devices up to one amp. What's new about this platform is you have a key that actually works as an ignition system. So the same key to remove the battery. This is also the same key that's used for the ignition on the bike. It's funny that they call it an ignition. There's no igniter. So most people will just keep it in the regular standard display. Basically all the information that you need. Another interesting thing about the display is you can put it in advanced mode and this will tell you everything about the electronic system. The voltage, the watts, the amps in real time, watt hours per mile, tells you your watt hour consumption, amp hour, controller temperature, and you have a trip counter. Now let's talk about the fun stuff. It all starts with a massive battery pack. We're one of the first companies to use a 52 volt standard. Uh, there's just so many advantages, which is gonna give you more power using less amps and get a higher speed on hub motors. On top of that, we pack it with 19.2 amps. 
which is 40% more than your average battery pack. So you get a lot more range, better power output, more efficient. Uh, you can go at higher speeds. Uh, this pack goes across all of our bike line. So we wanted this bike to do at least class three performance. Our target was 30 miles an hour on the throttle alone, but we wanted to do it on the 20 inch platform. There was no motor that existed. Uh, we went to one of the biggest motor manufacturers and said, hey, this is the motor that we want. So we've been working with Bafang for I think 10 years now. So I talked to a couple people and said, hey, let's let's do this motor. Gotta be 20 inches. Uh, we didn't want to deal with the spokes. Gotta be 4.0, gotta do 30 miles an hour. It's gotta be geared uh, and it has to be a cassette. Uh, about a year later, we delivered this motor and it's, it's it's an amazing, this is the platform uh, everybody's been dreaming about. So peak power is around 1800 watts, 35 amps at 52 volts, really uh, exploits that 52 volt battery pack, give you a nice satisfying performance. Pretty much all on throttle. Another very unique thing about the Hyper Scorpion is it uses a torque sensor and a cadence sensor. So most cadence sensors have 12 poles. This one has about 100 poles. So the moment you start pedaling, it instantly knows and the bike feels very, very reactive. In addition to sensing your pedal cadence, it also measures your force and it's doing that with the torque sensor. So it'll measure actually the pressure that you put down on the pedals. Uh, it's measuring that about a thousand times a second and it's using that information to match the throttle performance. Right now, for instance, pedaling very slowly, 16 amps. As soon as I push down, it jumps right up to 34 amps. If you never tried a torque sensor or electric bike, especially one with this much power, uh, as soon as you ride it, it just it just blows your mind. The bike comes in class two mode. Class two mode uh, allows you to go 20 miles an hour using throttle only. And with the pedal assist, you also get 20 miles an hour. If you live in a location that allows class three, about half the states in the US are now doing class three. You can, from the display, unlock the vehicle to class three and uh, you can ride 28 miles an hour on the pedal assist. The difference between 20 miles an hour and 28 miles an hour is a world of difference. <laughs> you don't necessarily need to ride always in class three, but it's really nice to have it, especially when you're moving in faster moving traffic. Uh, another thing that we did on the Hyper Scorpion is we have the ability to unlock it to race mode. Uh, race mode basically is used for racetracks or if you're uh, on private property. Basically unlocks the power of the bike. On throttle alone, you can go around 30 miles an hour, pedal assist, go just a little bit faster. Uh, definitely let you exploit the power of the bike uh, when you're in the right environment.